<laughs> this is Amunet. It's an Egyptian mummy, about 2,000 years old. At least the coffin is. We're still discovering new things about the mummy. But we received it in the 1920s from Dr. J. Morton Howe, who was the United States' first ambassador to Egypt. Since the 1920s, Amunet has been one of the most popular displays at the Ohio Historical Center, capturing the imagination of generations of school children. And the public face of Amunet is the face on the coffin, which is a lovely face, but we know it's not her face. We are now, with the CAT scan work of Ohio State University, getting a look at the face of Amunet. That CAT scan work on the 2,000-year-old mummy was performed here at the Wexner Medical Center at The Ohio State University and led by this man, Dr. Joseph Yu. Uh, one, they're interesting. I mean, everybody loves a mummy. As soon as I knew we had the opportunity, I, you know, we grabbed onto it because it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. It's so exciting and it generates a tremendous amount of buzz, not only amongst uh, academic scientists, but also in the public because um, everyone is trying to always learn more about uh, about our past. So it gives us uh, a chance to, to, to play an investigator and uh, a private investigator. It gives us a chance to be a, an archaeologist. It gives us a chance to be a little bit of an Indiana Jones kind of a guy. The blue part right there is that large hole where the brain was pulled out. What I was surprised with is how large it was because uh, it's almost large enough to put a rotor rooter <laughs> hose in there and just suck, it, suck everything out. You know, in movies we see that there are often jewelry and things of that nature uh, within the, these wrappings, but we didn't find any of those relics here. So here's the hand right here that kind of shows that it, um, it's clear that she was holding something because when we actually turn it and look down at it, uh, it's curled into it, so. Can you believe you can do this? I mean. I know, now <laughs> the, the actual processing of these images is quite fascinating because you know, the first time, uh, you know, I, I told you that each scan only takes about two or three minutes. Mm -hmm. And that data set actually each pass generated about uh, 21,000 images. And then from that, we took the raw data and then we reconstructed each one the computer did. And, uh, you know, we, we made four total passes. So approximately um, uh, almost 100,000 images. And from that, we then reconstructed all that data to. Uh, uh, to then deliver uh, anywhere from 84 to 8,700 real images. But the thing that is, uh, from an academic perspective, is that is, they're so full of information and things that, um, uh, you know, it is a representation of a true body uh, and the information that we derive from it is accurate. It's, it's real and it gives us uh, a tremendous amount of, of information that we otherwise would never have access to. Some of the questions that we were asking Ohio State to answer if they could through the new medical techniques they have now is, you know, how was her day-to-day -day life? Did she live um, a hard life? Did she lift a lot of things? Uh, was she, um, did she have any broken bones? Uh, things like that that might give us an idea of what her day-to-day -day life may have been. And through the images that they've been able to provide, we now have some of those answers. For years, since the Ohio Historical Society acquired the mummy, I don't think we've quite known what to do with it. Um, there's certainly a great deal of interest uh, at the time, and there still is a great deal of interest in ancient Egypt. So it's an attraction. And in fact, the mummy is one of the two things that visitors years later remember about their visit here. So there's no question about us having it on display, but it doesn't fit into the archeology span of Ohio. It's not part of that story. Um, I suppose the connection is that it was acquired by this uh, Ohioan who was the ambassador to Egypt and donated it here and we were interested enough at the time to have accepted it. Reflecting the fact that we haven't known quite what to do with it, it's currently in, in, a, in an exhibit of curiosities. The exhibit label calls it a curiosity. But the fascinating thing about this new CAT scan research that we've been doing 
is that for me at least, and I think for Linda too, it's humanized this woman. Um, I can't think of her as a curiosity anymore. She's a woman with a story. And the more we learn about her story, the more I feel some kind of connection with this woman. And, and I want us in future interpretations here to try to convey that.